Welcome, faithful viewers of ABN. We are so excited about the show today. Today we want to talk about an event that's going to take place in June at Cobo Center to unite the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan at the same time exalt God. You know, all of us are looking forward to getting to heaven one day, and when we get to heaven, we're going to find something out real quick, that everybody is united. There's no creeded, there's no different colors or different socioeconomic classes. Everybody's one. Everyone's loving the same way. Everyone loves each other the same way. And we want to have a taste of heaven come to our city in June at Cobo Center. You know, just a couple short months ago, it was a, it was a great event called The Call at Ford Field. And we have some great pastors from the city who are here with us today. They're going to talk about what actually happened. And what our invitation to our viewers is today is to invite you to be part of that event in June at Cobo Center. You know, in John chapter 17, Jesus prayed for himself, and then he prayed for his disciples, then he prayed for all the believers. As believers, we need prayer for numerous things, dozens of things, maybe even hundreds of things. But Jesus only prayed for one thing for us, that we be one like him and his Father are one. In Psalms 133, it says that when we're united, that, that commands the blessing of God. And we're just excited to unite the city of Detroit, Detroit Metropolitan, the state of Michigan, into an event to declare Jesus to be Lord over our city and over our state and just exalt his name. And I want to introduce some special guests today. We have the visionary of the event here with us. We'd like to just introduce himself, uh, Brian Jones, Pastor Brian Jones, and his lovely wife, Serena. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're just welcoming you on behalf of the ABM viewers. If you just kind of share what God has spoken to you and why you're excited about the event and what you want God to accomplish this event. Amen. First of all, I want to say thank you for having us on this wonderful platform on ABN. And uh, which, oh, you ain't looking to the camera here. <laughs> um, we're just so excited about being here with you. And uh, we thank you again for having us. Well, God is, is, is really moving on the hearts and minds of his people today. And there's a spirit of gathering. You know, we experienced that, which you talked about in the call, 11-11-11. Um, um, we saw, I believe, close to 40,000 people converge mm -hmm. on Ford Field in Detroit. And I believe that was a spark for leadership to find out, you know, we, we have more in common. And, and there are threads that bind us. And, we, we found that we have more in common than not in common, those that love the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that the, the global gathering is uh, one of the sustainable uh, moves of God that uh, has come uh, for June um, to bring focus uh, to that uh, move of God that happened in 11-11-11. In and we're just excited because w what we're f finding is that different nationalities and different nations are being drawn together, that there's leaders coming from the Hispanic community, Amen. from the African-American community, and, and we're crossing cultural uh, uh, lines um, and barriers, and we're coming together to discover where we fit in to the body of Christ and how we can help each other. You know, the Bible says that we're part of one body Amen. and we're jointly, fitly mm -hmm. put together. And what a wonderful thing when we discover where we fit in. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's easy to be off into our own corner doing our own thing. But there's a corporate call. I believe the body of Christ is arising as one man. Mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing that the sense of urgency to come together to discover how we can bless one another and, and how we can be jointly fitly put together. It's really a call of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's, n you know, I often say it's not about Brian Jones. It's mm -hmm. really not because I'm not the only person who's heard this call. Mm -hmm. um, God just used me to make an announcement. But there's, there's uh, much more great uh, men and women of God that are coming uh, than I. I'm just happy to be a small part of it. Well, Pastor Brian, we really appreciate your obedience to our God and to putting this event together. And um, uh, Pastor Alex, would you just share from your perspective, you know, what you feel like, you know, I know that you've been a praying man in the city for mm -hmm. years. I know that you're very dear friends with my pastor. 
And I know that you've worked together diligently, and both of you are on your knees to bring this entire city, entire state under one God, mm -hmm. undivided. And would you just kind of share the joy that's in your heart for this event and what you feel you want God to accomplish? Absolutely. But really, since this is a manifestation of prayer that's based on John 17, that they all might be one, and for so long we've been divided in our own little corners, doing what we think God wants us to do, and that's not a bad thing per se, but the reality is, if Jesus is going to come back for the real church, it's going to be one church, not a divided church, not a black church, a white church, a Chaldean church. He's coming back for one church. And what that means is we have to begin to discern each other properly. The Apostle Paul told the church of Corinth, henceforth, we know no man after the flesh. Mm -hmm. So we've got to begin to discern each other by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I discern my brothers by who the Spirit of God is mm -hmm. in them not the color of their skin or their ethnic background. So when we begin to do that, we go beyond our boundaries, we begin to love people for who they are as God's children in the body of Christ. So as we do that, we will begin to see signs, wonders, miracles, mm -hmm. and really the theme of, uh, of the conference, Unveil the Glory, will really take place. There's a glory we're yet to see. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that so important? I believe each segment of the body of Christ has an element of that glory. Mm -hmm. So when they all come together mm -hmm. as one, look out, devil, here we come. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, growing up, um, I was always only comfortable worshiping the people of my kind. Mm -hmm. And now the most glory-filled worship service I can go to is when there's every race, sex, color, and creed. And that's just exciting. You know, um, this might be a newsflash for some of our viewers, but I really feel that God and Jesus are just beyond disappointed with words like Catholic and Baptist Amen. and Lutheran and Pentecostal and Presbyterian Amen. and Episcopalian. We go on and on and on. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Not Catholics are the way, not Baptists are the way, not Pentecostal. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one gets to my Father except through me. And what, they really, what, what their <laughs> burden prayer is for us is for us to be united in an unblemished body in the, in, uh, for, for, for Christ. So, um, Pastor uh, Marvin, would you share what's in your heart and why you're leaping for joy about this event and, and what your church is, is striving for for this event? As the word of the Lord says, I'm just glad to be here. <laughs> I mean, I'm humbled. Uh, shalom to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ. I am just excited uh, to be a part of a global move. I had an opportunity to be a part of the call that happened on 11-11-11. And uh, our brother Lou Engel prayed and fasted, and we went on literally a 40-day fast for God to do something in this particular region that was going to be sustained, not just a 24-hour event, but something that was going to go beyond 24 hours and one second. And now we see an opportunity on unveiling the glory in June for us to expand on what God did here in Detroit. And I believe these three days will be a manifestation of the power of God mm -hmm. and really what heaven is going to look like. <laughs> Amen. We have our own ways. And it's amazing how I can hook up with my brother here. And I might not do everything he do, but I believe when we get to heaven, we'll be doing our own little praise. <laughs> Amen. We'll be lifting up our hands, giving glory to our God. Amen. In different tongues, different languages, but to one body. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So I really want you to get excited in this particular region. I really want you to come out. Amen. And experience something that is beyond you. Amen. This is not about any of us. Amen. It's going to go beyond us and we're going to see, amen, healings taking place. Mm -hmm. We're going to see miracles take place. We're going to see a manifestation. Whenever we sacrifice, there always is a outpouring. And I believe just part of us just being here today lets us know that the Holy Spirit is at work to bring about something special in all of our lives. God bless. You know, I remember when we were 
together at that luncheon at um, Ford Field before the call took place. And Lou Engle spoke these words. He said that you cannot defeat a prayer culture with a prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to let the audience know that we are, when you're out there warring for your family, mm -hmm. warring with your church, you're not battling against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil spirits and principalities. There are at work 24 seven. And um, the person who brought the call Detroit spoke these words. He said that if we're just gonna do a prayer meeting, we might as well not do it. The whole purpose of the event on November 11th where tens of thousands came to Fourfield was to begin a prayer culture and a movement towards unity in the body of Christ here in the state. And as Second Chronicles says, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray to God that he will forgive their sins and heal their land. And that's our prayer and our cry and a continuous prayer and cry. Pastor uh, Joseph, we're here, thrilled that you're here today as well. And if you would just share with us, you know, why you feel it's an answer to prayer and what you're expecting from this event, that would be amazing. Well, I believe that prayer for Christians is a universal language and it transcends all of our cultures, all of our nationalities. And as a result of that, I believe that when we come together as one, we will certainly witness the power of God as we have not seen it for many, many years. We believe in that as all of our cultures and all of the classes of people come together under one name, and that's the name of Jesus Christ. He says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And I believe the power of God will draw. We will certainly see signs, wonders, and miracles, healings from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I believe the church needs to come together. This is something that is imperative upon all of us. And so it was the light of my heart to know that this gathering was coming together, and I'm looking forward to joining. I'm going to turn over to our, our bilingual brothers in a moment just to share in a different language. I'm in Arabic and Chaldean, the message that we're trying to portray. But, you know, the reason why I'm excited is um, in the last five years, I've been called to international evangelism where I've gone to Haiti four times. I've gone to India. I've gone to Thailand. I've gone to um, all over Central and South America. And when we go to a city, we tell them that we want to come and declare Jesus to be Lord of your city. And we talk to all the local pastors. We say, time to work together the biggest event for christ to ever come to your city is coming and you know how often we hear things like nope i'm not working with that pastor i'm not working that church because their uncle stole a chicken from my aunt <laughs> about 37 years ago and we still remember that chicken it was a sad day in our family and there's these grudges and this bitterness and that's not of god okay it is really really time to drop every wall between different races mm -hmm. different creeds and say that we are one under the body of Christ. And when we do that, we're going to see exactly what the website says. We're going to see God unveil his glory over our city and over our state. And I just think it's amazing that in probably one of the most worst economically hit areas, regions, in the entire country, it is this region that God is speaking to the spirits of people, one man from Kansas City, a whole bunch of brothers here in the state, to say, it is I want to I show my glory here because... If this, if this city and this day and this region comes back, you know it's going to be God. It wasn't our economic bliss and our, um, our abundance, to say the least. But I want to turn over to Brother Saber and Brother Mark and, and just have them convey um, their excitement about this event and invite you out. So, Brother Saber. Um, I'm going to speak Arabic, uh, so bear with me a little bit now. أهلاً وسهلاً أعزائنا المشاهدين في هذا البرنامج وهدف هذا البرنامج أنه هو التوحيد وهو جسد الرب ليس منقسم بس جسد الرب هو الواحد المؤمنين ما يسميه الكنيسة كنيسة الرب هي كنيسة واحدة تعني المؤمنين لماذا هذا الجمع في هذا المكان هذا الجمع يشيء بس يؤدي إلى وحدة الكنائس في, في وحدة العبادة إلهنا إله واحد ليس إله مشقق وليس إله الأسود ولا إله البيض ولا إله الجميع الطوائف الموجودة في العالم في العالم بس إله واحد وإله إله الواحد وهذا هو الهدف ممكن راح الحادث اللي راح يحدث يوم ما في الشهر السادس سبعة وثمانية وتسعة شهر السادس وهو سبعة ووجون سبعة وثمانية وتسعة أو هو المجتمع أو التجمع العالمي لإظهار مجد لإظهار مجد الله وهذا هو 
السبب الرئيسي لظهار مجد الله يا قوة الله وعمل الله في حياة البشر. سو so, uh, ابقوا معنا اعزائي راح ندخل بالتفاصيل اكثر. Uh, لماذا هذا الاجتماع؟ هو لهدف واحد بس لمجد الله. لا لمجد اي شيء اخر في هذه الحياة، لا من اجل فلان طائفة او فلان كنيسة او فلان uh, فلان uh, uh, مجمع ابدا ابدا، بس الكل اتين لهذا الهدف وهدفهم هو واحد وهدف هو الصليب، صليب المسيح. واظهار مجد المسيح واظهار مجد الله في حياه في حياه المؤمنين سوفقوا so, معنا ان شاء الله راح ندخل بالتفاصيل ممكن اكثر ممكن عندكم عندكم تساؤلات وتخابرون ممكن تقدروا تخابرون وتستفسرون اكثر من هذا الشيء لانه صار لنا مجال او وقت كثير في خلال سنين كثيره انه ما نعرف شيء عن الكنائس الاخرى الموجوده واللي اللي تريد تعلن مجد الله في حياتها وما هو احسن وقت احسن وقت هو الموجود اليوم ان نصرخ الى الله بصوت واحد ككل كنايس ان من اجل انه من اجل ان ايد الله تتدخل في حياه كل واحد بعدنا وتشفينا وترفعنا مره ثانيه حتى ان الله يمجد في حياتنا والله يباركنا وبحاجه الى امس امس الحاجه اليوم في ايد الرب وبركه الرب في حياتنا Brother Mark. Thank you, Brother Scott. Hello to everybody. أنا زي ما حكينا أخو هذا قصته خشوا إن عنا ألاه دي التوى بشمية for sure for sure كيبلو كل أخو الشبوط ولا بسورة زي البوت منا تريمن دان very مهم تريمن دان دثيلا كلها أن أش آخذ ملفيل صلوخو أنا زي قارنا أخو اللي منهن قالي يوم دمرنا قصته ميلا ثيلا الإيشو حكم ممريلة أي القويرة بختي كي بعد ما ثاوى يا لو اللي بعد مثل قمة بريا كم شاقلة أخونا وأخونا وخنا وخنا وشو أخوات الزلة وكم مميل مثلا بقيمة الموتى دام بتويا كم ما ميرا أختو وتغليط لكي ذو تكثاوى لكي ذو تهنجاليون لكي ذو تتنيث دمريا ولكي ذو تقوة تدألها أنتر من داني إلى فيري مهم تشعب ديا نديذيلة أخني أخي يخبي مارا نعنى لخ من دنا شيء بدمولف لأخو إناف إلا أختو قاروتو بيجان أخو حتى ديذوتو قوة المريا ميلا سو ما كي بعد وذي آني كي بعد ملفي لأخو نعنى ليل ألاها بس بيت توثو أخو لو ليل ألاها بس بيت توثو أخو إل أكد إلى تنيثة فرشتة أكد إلى تنيثة ملابتة سو آني كي بعد داثة آخر نعنى بيرخد إشتا بشو تمانية وتشا بني وماثا وكيبالو خد عثوتو مشجعوتو وبيشوتو خان مي ولا او موخو بالمناسبة الموقع اللي راح تكون هذه الفرصة او بدكتا زي هوية بقاوة قرالة كوبو سنتر كوبو سنتر يرخد اشتا شو تمانية وتشا سو مكيبوتن يستفسار بشكابر ياريت مخبرتو ارامية بياخلو هذه استفسار بشكابر I just Uh, clearly mentioned that uh, we need to see the, uh, the glory of God unveiled through the lives of believers. Uh, doesn't matter the denomination, doesn't matter the churches, it doesn't matter what, uh, the, you know, the, the church is the believers. And we need, in this, this desperate times that Detroit is in desperate needs of God's help. And uh, that includes every single person here in Michigan and Detroit, that God's hand can be upon people. And if we can be in, un in unity, and empower and we can see God, God's hand move among us. Amen, amen. You know, um, if you're out there and you're a mother and you're a father and you have some young children and you saw your young children bicker, you know, maybe two brothers fighting and bickering over silly little things, in your mind and your heart, you know how many times you've said as a parent, I can't wait till they just mature. Mature and get past these silly little arguments and small things that they bicker up. They're just not worth it. One day mature, they will not bicker, argue, and fight anymore. And you have to imagine right now that God and Jesus are saying the same thing about the people in this land. I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians 1.10, where Paul is writing, he says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Okay, that's everybody, every race, every color and creed. Let there be no divisions in the church, Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. To live in harmony, one mind, united in thought and purpose. In other words, to mature, to mature. 
So, um, brother, if you would just share with us um, more the logistic side. So it's going to be a Cobo Hall. How long will the event be? What do you believe in God for as far as the amount of people to come? What is it going to be like inside? Is there going to be preaching? Is there going to be singing? If you kind of talk through what you envision this event to look like. Absolutely. The event, um, uh, the Global Gathering, will be held at Cobo Center in uh, June 7th, 8th, and 9th. Uh, during this time, uh, you're going to experience uh, a wonderful uh, worship, praise and worship opportunity. Uh, there will also be uh, praise and worship in different languages. As Chaldean is, is one of those languages. Um, a multi multicultural uh, praise and worship experience. Uh, we'll be having uh, different sessions and workshops during this event. Uh, uh, Pastor, you talked about coming to a place of maturity that will help mature you in the things of God, uh, especially uh, concerning growing church, church growth, uh, economics, and, uh, development, and, and many, many uh, workshops will go on. Of course, we're going to have uh, some dynamic uh, speakers that will be preaching the word of God. Um, they can go to, to the website, unveiltheglory.com, and, and get a list of all those speakers. But the main focus is to come together and pray and get in God's presence and believe God to manifest his glory uh, amongst the people uh, because it's all about Jesus. And if we come together in one mind, in one heart, you know, that's what they did in the ancient days, in the times of old. The Bible says that they were all in one place, in, in one mind, one heart, of one accord. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven. Come on, somebody. And it <laughs> filled the house where they were sitting. And it appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And they all began to speak with other tongues as they were filled with God's spirit. Uh, I'm believing God is going to ignite the fire again. And, and there's a move of God that's for this generation. And if we don't come together and put aside our differences, we won't walk in that type of anointing. I believe that we have to come back to, uh, to the ancient ways. Um, Jesus chose 12 disciples who laid the foundation for the church. And if the church is ever going to walk in its fullest potential, we need to look and we need to study um, uh, the, the mindset and the culture of those uh, disciples that Jesus chose. You know, I, I just believe that Jesus chose men that would be faithful to carry out his wishes and his word. So uh, we're, we're going back and, and, and revisiting uh, the, the mindset of, of Jesus' disciples, and we want to follow after those footsteps and come together, put our differences aside and ask God to come in the midst of us. So it's going to be 72 hours of prayer, praise, worship and word. We're going to have and we're going to facilitate that by uh, this churches that are, have already come and registered. And we're going to have satellite services going around on around the city and around the region. So there'll be a prayer movements going on in the middle of the night. There'll be worship going on in the middle of the night and uh, something for everybody over 20 different sessions during these three days. Amen. Amen. Um, Pastor Alice, would you share, you know, we're about two months away from that. Is there anything in particular that your church is doing to prepare? Is there a certain way you're praying? Is there a certain level of expectancy or talk or, um, getting the word out, if you will, that you guys are doing? Absolutely. One of the things, because we were really involved with the call last year, last mm -hmm. November, and after the call was over, we didn't want to have a, a one big event and we all go our separate ways. Mm -hmm. There's been an ongoing perpetual ga gathering of leaders in our respective churches, Pastor Marvin Miles, one of his leaders, and my son, who's a pastor. They've been getting together with other groups, and they've been having prayer times together. They pray together every Tuesday night. They'll be praying late tonight. They have worship time together where they have something called the Gathering of the 300. Mm -hmm. It's all building towards what's going to be taking place in June. It's important that we understand what's really happening here. 
God is after glory in this region. Mm. And it's not for man to get the glory. Amen. It's for him to get the glory. What does that really, really mean? We use the word unveiling the glory. What does that really mean? The glory of God is his manifested presence. Mm -hmm. We know God is omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere all the time, but it's not apparent. When it's apparent, that's the glory. Mm -hmm. When it's mm -hmm. obvious, God is here. Mm -hmm. In June mm -hmm. at Cobo Center, June 7th, 8th, and 9th, it will be apparent that God is here. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. 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 You know, our tradition, how we grew up, has literally bounded us to a structural building. We have, for example, eight churches in our community. One of them literally has 60,000 members registered. It is extremely difficult to sway them away from any other foundation that they could possibly believe Jesus could be present at, existent. What can you guys tell us to convince them that it is actually okay to get in their cars, <laughs> to come and park it in downtown Detroit, enter this building, and raise your hand and worship him because he's there. And if you appear, he will reward you. He will instill something in you out of his word that will benefit you for the coming days. Because it's not just good enough for us to know that he loved us. We have to do something somehow to show him that we love him. What could that be? How can you guys convince our people that it huh. is really okay to come other than the building they go to every Sunday? Um, I can answer that, my brother. The Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, mm -hmm. there is liberty or freedom. The Bible mentions tabernacles throughout the Old Testament, and it is called the Mohel Moed. It is called the meeting place. Mm -hmm. In Egypt, God spoke to Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go, yes, he did. to let them go. Pharaoh was trying to hold them in, but God spoke to Moses to let the people out. God told Moses to tell Pharaoh that I have a mo el moed in the wilderness. I have a date set where I want my people to meet me and I want to come back into fellowship with them in the tabernacle. Can I get amen? Like amen. amen. <laughs> the Bible says that Pharaoh resisted and because of that, plagues came. We don't want any of you to resist the call of the Spirit of God that's going to happen in June. Mm -hmm. Because there is going to be a glory reveal. We've been talking about glory being revealed. But the glory is nothing other than the Shekinah. It is like a cloud it is a weight when you think about shekinah it comes heavy when the lord comes in Come on. it's heavy he comes with power he comes with might he he comes to free your mind of stress anxiety and pain he's trying to get you to a place of worship he, he's trying to get you of the daily chaos is into something that is revelatory. So because Pharaoh resisted, God said, I got a date and a time set. Since you're not gonna move, I'm gonna make you move. Mm. And we remember now, they put blood over the doorpost. Yes, and if you really study it out, it was a sign of the cross. It was. Amen. Come on somebody, Amen. talk to me now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen, a sign of the cross. And the Bible says, when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over. It's time to step into another weight Amen. of glory. Yes. We're going to the Mohed Moed outside of your own comfort zone to meet fellow believers that's going to lift up the name of the Lord because he is a strong tower Amen. where the righteous can come in and be safe 
and saved. Amen. That's why it's important that you come from your house to our house. Glory to God. Amen. 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 You know, just to, to the audience, I want to say that um, you know, Jesus said that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Mm. And Jesus also said to the disciples, he said, imagine your life is hanging out with Jesus for three years. Mm. You are hanging out with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the only way, the only truth, and the only life. You're hanging out with him, and he looks at you and says, it is better for you that I go, because if I go, then the Holy Spirit can come. Imagine Jesus saying to you, it is better for you that I go, and the Holy Spirit will come. And I want to let you guys know something. The Holy Spirit that you worship is not a different Holy Spirit that they worship. There is one Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that spoke to my brother here about this event, about putting on this event, is exactly the same Holy Spirit that you pray for every single day Amen. to guide you and to teach you and to watch over you and to be with your children and to protect you and to provide for you. It's the same Holy Spirit. I don't have a different Holy Spirit than you, and they don't have it. We all have one. There's only one Holy Spirit. It is the Trinity. It is the Godhead, and we are all connected. We are all one in the body of Christ. One body, different parts. Amen. So I'm just excited about this event. And Pastor Joseph, if you would just kind of share just what's kind of gleaming in your hearts about what your church is doing, what you're doing, what you're doing to mobilize the troops and, and uh, get people. Uh, one of the things about it is that um, we're trying to do what we call Ignite the Fire events. And that means that several churches may have prayer services going on where the people of God in the community and the region can come gather together and we begin to ignite this fire, build the fire, stoke the fire in preparation for June 7th, 8th, and 9th. And we're also going to have worship services with different uh, ministers sharing with the people of God. So that's what we're trying to do, make sure that all across the city, all across the state, there are various uh, churches of prayer or places of prayer that you can gather in and just prepare yourself to meet the Lord June the 7th, 8th, and 9th. Amen. Brother Saber, if you would tell the people, you know, why they should come. And, uh, well, before I do that, I, you know, um, uh, Pastor Miles, you mentioned something very, very uh, important. And that is the whole, you know, the, the whole idea here is that people need to get connected with God. Amen. All right. And uh, uh, it seems like, um, and, and, and we've been hearing violence throughout Detroit, mm. violence throughout families, throughout mm. violence throughout. Mm. They don't know there is an answer to all this. And the answer is God's hands. Mm. And that to the listeners today, uh, to, or to the hearers today, that they can come. And when he talked about Shekinah glory, mm. uh, to, to, to read about that mm. and, 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 and feel the God's hand and God's power Ooh, and glory. God's grace and God's like mercy. Right <laughs> okay, and God's mercy throughout this. You can't help but to rejoice and just dance. You know, you feel like dancing Amen. Amen. inside of you. And this is a message we're relating to the people that are listening today mm. that come and see literally God's hands move, mm. moving um, among God. And if you want changes through your life to see that uh, you know for a fact, uh, and, and we know when we say for a fact, we know that God, when God touches a life, mm. he, touches, he changes a life. Mm. He says those who are in Christ are a new, crea new creation. All things be, uh, uh, you know, become new. Uh, all things are past. All things are past. Everything become new. Mm. And this is what's all about, actually. To know, number one, is that ch lives can be changed, and, and, and the glory of God can be, can be on, upon that lives. And to know that no, no, not a thing in the world uh, that you can worry about anymore. Why? Because you're in God's hands. Absolutely. And this is what's, mm -hmm. what it re really is all about, to know that what, what the event is going to be uh, is going to be is to know that God's power can move. Amen. And there isn't a sinner too great that God cannot save. Amen. Or there isn't a problem too big for God. Isn't, mm. that's, isn't that what he said to Moses? He, said, he told him, is there anything too hard for me? Mm. You know, and, and to know that, uh, yes. uh, uh, to know to become one, um, uh, whether it be Hispanics, Chaldeans, Arabs, mm. Muslims, uh, blacks, you know, and I, I believe God's hand can move. I really truly believe, uh, believe God's hands can move. And you know what we have, uh, uh, my brother was saying here, that when they were praying in the upper room, mm. the room was shaken. That's right. And mm. you know that we can get that anymore. And, and you know, uh, the, the whole idea here, I see, why can't we see God's hand upon uh, us Christians today? And why can't we see God's um, hand moving in the mysterious ways? Because it's our problem, not his problem. He says, he says I'm the same. I, I changed not. I was the same God yesterday, today. 
and forever. The same God that did the dramatic miracles can do the mm -hmm. same thing all over again. We need just to get, the, he says, be holy, for tomorrow I will, I will create a new miracle. Mm. Yeah. I, I want to, brother, I'm on the edge of my seat right now. I feel some, <laughs> something moving in here. <laughs> I want everyone to understand what this man of God said. Why is it that sin has abounded in this year? Mm. Why is it that we are at a place where we have record unemployment? Why is it that our neighborhoods are crumbling? The Bible says, if he be lifted up, if Jesus be lifted up, he will draw all men to him how do we take our neighborhoods back pastor brian jones has a vision for us to take our neighborhoods back how so the lord has blessed us where sin abounds am i right come on man of god where sin abounds grace does much more abound we have seen it firsthand you take it back block by block Amen. by block in this global gathering we are going into strategic strategies for economic development on how as pastors as leaders you can take your neighborhood it's called kingdom yeah. principles. Come on, come on. It's kingdom principles. Don't walk by mm. drug infested come buildings on. and say, oh, that's somebody else's problem. It's your problem. That's right. It's going to take more than just praying. You're going to have to put fasting with those prayers yes, yes. to yes. get rid of the enemy that's trying to destroy your neighborhood. That is what was going on in our part of the region, which is called ECOR. We had gang violence, drug violence, murders, prostitution, and the Lord spoke to me and said, listen, I want you to dismiss service. I want you to take holy oil. I want you to walk where you want to own. We walked eight blocks. We dismissed the church, blew the shofar, and 800 people followed me down the street. My wife was pregnant walking down the street. We poured oil on buildings that we wanted. We played, poured oil on the ground. The Lord says the grounds that you walk on, he said he'll give it to you. Amen. Listen here, beloved. We own eight blocks for the glory of God right now. Where there used to be yeah. drugs, no more drugs. Am I right about I it, it, men of I God? Amen. The waste places. Amen. Those buildings that was crumbling in our neighborhood. All of a sudden, we have senior housing complex. Amen. We have apartments. We have uh, uh, condominiums. We, we, we're building a, a veterans facility. We're building a strip mall as we speak with an international cafe, an international uh, grocery store. Why? For the glory of God, because thy kingdom come. Mm. Thy will on, be on, done. On. It's already done in heaven. We want it done right here in earth. That's why you need to be a part Amen. of what God is doing, <coughs> unveiling the glory. Amen. Wow. Amen. Yes. That's good. That's Wonderful. Good. Awesome. You know, when we gather <coughs> in his name, <coughs> it is, a, is a dynamic there. Mm. Um, and, and we see a principle in the Bible where. Uh, when people would gather together with one mind and one heart, God says it's nothing impossible That's right. to them. And, and Jesus said, if there be two or three gathered in my name, mm. there I am mm. in the midst of them. So he's not just in the building. Mm. He's when, mm. when we come together, like, like we mm. feel him here. Amen. We feel his presence here. Mm. Why? Because we're gathered in his name. And the dynamic of that is not just saying his name, but gathering in his name. Mm. You know, uh, in the culture of, of the name, uh, when the name is given in, in the Jewish culture, it represents the personality. It describes the character of the person. 
So the name of Jesus, when we say the name of Jesus, we, we're saying we're one with you. We're coming into agreement with Jesus. So anybody could say the name Jesus with their <coughs> lips. But when we say his name with our lips and with our heart, mm. and there's a horizontal manifestation of oneness, Jesus says, I can manifest myself in that atmosphere. So we're coming together to gather in his name, in his nature, in who he is. You know, when we have an agenda and the Holy Spirit does one of these things, I just feel led right now to say to you that there's been way too much in this region of Latinos praying only for Latinos mm. and Arabs praying for the Arabs and the African Americans praying for themselves. Mm. There's been way too much of a husband praying for his wife and children and the wife only praying for her husband and children and not praying for the people across the street because you had a little disagreement two and a half years ago. What I want to do right now is just interrupt. Jesus kind of, for a living, for his ministry, he just interrupted people's lives. So we're going to interrupt this with some prayer time. And I want to ask you, brothers, if you don't mind, to pray a blessing over the Arab people in this region because they've not heard, they've heard a blessing pray come from their priests and pastors, but not from someone from a different creed. They've never heard that before. If you would pray a blessing over them, then I ask you gentlemen in our language to pray a blessing over the whole event and over the whole region of every culture. And let's just seal this with a prayer. Would you guys yeah. mind doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Father, right now, by the authority of Jesus' name, we release the blessings of the kingdom over the viewing audience yes, of all those of Chaldean descent and uh, Arabic descent and every other nationality and culture that's watching this program right now. We release favor. Mm. You said in Psalms, you'll perfect the things that concern them. Mm. Father, we pray, dear God, concerning their families, their marriages, their children, mm -hmm. their, lo their loved ones, uh, their businesses, their careers, their jobs. Uh, we pray, dear God, that you'll perfect the things that concern them. We pray according to Philippians chapter mm -hmm. 1, verse 6, that they can be confident of this very thing, that you, which have begun a good work in them, you'll perform it until the day of our Lord and Savior, yes. Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. 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 Let's have each of you. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come. And we thank you for the spirit of unity, even in the midst of our diversity. We come now asking God that you would bless every ethnicity. We thank you, Lord God, that even now your power is prevailing in their lives. We embrace them in the spirit realm as our brothers and our sisters. We lift them up before you, O oh God. And we ask God that you would give a manifestation of your presence, even in their homes at this very present moment. We thank you, dear God, even now. We ask that the glory of God would be made evident and manifest before them, O oh God. Father God, we pray that you would bless their families, bless their businesses, and oh God, everything that they are concerned about, even this moment, that you would show yourself to be a mighty God. We believe to receive, and we call it done in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Lord God, I pray right now for your love from on high, the agape love yes, sir. that's shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Lord, how will we know that we are your disciples by the love we show one to another? Holy Spirit of God right now, ignite our hearts, our minds, our thoughts to now to operate not in our love, but your love right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you for those that are watching this program. And Father, we just send the Holy Spirit. We ask that you would uh, send the Holy Spirit into the home of each and every person who is watching and listening right now. And that you would minister to them and bring them to a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them to a place of intimacy and oneness oneness with your name <coughs> oneness with your nature one with your word and bring us to one with each other mm -hmm. father i pray that you would restore families that the families out there that, that that have been broken father i pray that you would send the husbands back home send that son that daughter back home 
Father, that you would protect those families that have, have extended families that are abroad in other mm -hmm. nations, that your protection mm -hmm. would be upon them in a mighty, mighty way, Father. And I pray that, uh, that your spirit will gather <coughs> and touch the hearts and minds of each and every one under the sound of my voice. And Father, I pray for the youth, yes. the youth, the, the Arab youth and the <coughs> Chaldean youth, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, help us as mm -hmm. leaders to uh, bring them to a place of intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Lord, help us to show them that being a Christian is fun, that being a Christian is exciting, Amen. that having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is the best thing that could ever happen to them. Yes. Father, help us as leaders, Father, to help the youth emerge as mighty, mighty people of God. In the name of Jesus, bless, bless the communities. Bring us together for your plans and purposes in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. And, and would you gentlemen pray for just a special unity like we never had before and for the event coming up? كم مغزتي كيبا بشكابر منو خم مديلا بشقالة من يتوثي ومن شعب يي بس إلى زين إلى بخشكا يعني إلى بسيكرت إلى بيهين كلوز دورز إلى سير الثروات هلا قوة هلا جرعة هلا هلا حكمة فلتي دمري مثلا أخني لازم أثق ثاوة قديشة أثق ثاوة دروحة قدشة دبلخل بقاوي حزيقة كل جداور اللي داتن أخني لازم تقاروخ لمن قميثة والخريثة لازم أثمن دي تقاروخ ل قي أثق ثاوة ليل مثلا دريا بداتن قي للأثق ثاوة ملفة طالن قي وخخني منيع مثق ثاوة اتفايش أخني بقيانا دريسة يا مارني شو عمشي حكاثن إلو طلب منه خب قوته خد أورت بلبي وجاوتا قوة فلطي من دس السجن دي لاوير بقاوي بشم دي شو عزيزة آمين يا رب رافعين قلوبنا أمامك في هذا المساء يا رب شاكرينك من أجل يا رب نعمتك من أجل صليبك يا رب لك المجد يا رب ولك القوة ولك الحمد يا رب في اسم يسوع يا رب طالبين وجهك أنت يا رب تسير بوجهك أمامنا وتشرق وجهك علينا كلنا يا رب أرجوك بالمسيح يا رب أنت خلقت البشر لمجدك لا خلقت طائفة معينة يا رب ولا دين معين أن يمجدك بت خلقت البشرية كلها يا رب أن تمجدك رافعين قلوب أمام عرش نعمتك يا رب في هذا في هذا المساء من نقول يا رب يكون المجد لك ووحدك ولا لغيرك يا رب نباركك ونعظمك يا رب في هذا المساء أرجوك بالمسيح يسوع يا رب ساعد ساعدنا يا رب من أجل توحيد وحدنا يا رب بقلب واحد وبصوت واحد أن نصرخ إليك ليلا ونهارا يا رب لكي يعظم اسمك ومجدك فقط يا رب هذه هدفنا يا رب في هذا اليوم أن نتوحد لمجد, لمجد اسمك ولمجد اسمك فقط يا رب ليس لنا أي هدف آخر في هذه الحياة إلا أن نرفعك عاليا يا رب ونبارك اسمك يا رب عاليا وارجوك روحك القدس يا رب يكون على كل شخص يا رب شايف وسامع يا رب والموجودين في نفس الوقت أنه ليظهر مجدك يا رب في حياة كل واحد من عندنا يا رب نشكرك ونباركك ونسأل ونطلب كل هذا في اسم ربنا يسوع المسيح وله كل المجد آمين Father I just come to you right now I just pray that you would exalt yourself through this event Father that from this event that all things happen good for those that love you and are called according to your purpose Father, I ask that you speak to, to the spirit of each person in the audience today, Father. Just a spirit that, that raises you up, that every seed of, the, of your word that's coming to them begin in this season to bear tremendous fruit. We pray a special blessing over their families, over their marriages, over their children. And Father, we pray that right now you are putting to each spirit of each listener, you are assigning them with visions and dreams yes. and passion yes. and purpose and assignment 
and promotion of the kingdom of God. Father, we pray for a multiplication harvest from the shelf, that there will be assignments given to each person to share, to teach, to prophesy, to pastor, to evangelize, to witness, to lift up your name every place they go. And Father, we just thank you for a massive calling of, 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 the, of the Arab and Chaldean people to this event. Father, that the Latinos come, the whites come, the blacks come, the Spanish come, the Arabs come, that they all come. Father, they all be one. They all hold hands in unity, glorifying the one true God who is you. And Father, we just pray for a special blessing over our region. We cancel out every assignment of the devil over our region in the name of Jesus. We strike the enemy, deaf, dumb, and blind, say no more. You cannot have our land. This land is holy and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Yes. And we just pray for an open heaven over our region. Let the whole nation know that what brought us from ashes, what brought us from crushed stone, was you, was your glory, was your power, of, was your love that you instilled upon each of us. Father, give us each assignment to maximize this event in the name of Jesus. And let your glory fall like we've never seen or known in this event. Father, we pray for blind eyes to open, yes, for amen. deaf ears to hear, for lame to get up and walk. And we pray for miracle after miracle and sign after wonder at this event. We come to glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, it's obvious that God is up to something great. And I just can't tell you, you know, how excited I am. So what, what other message do you have for the people? Can I ask him a question? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you guys all know when Jesus arrived on the scene, there was a religious institution, a religious spirit, a religious boundary, a religious captivity amongst the masses. They were literally held bound by what was back then called the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. They were actually told how to live and how to li be and what to do. Today, amongst our people, which are approximated at two, three hundred thousand, there actually exist some secret disciples that, that really want more spirituality. They want more biblical principles. They want more holiness. I mean, they, they are practically so close to hearing the voice of Jesus to say, come out from among them, my people, you know, come to a holier place. How do we persuade them? Like, how do we convince them? How do we say, do not be fearful of what they may say, you know, like your institution or your, uh, your uh, common people or your friends or your relatives? There really is a lot of movement happening amongst them, even us here. You know, because Jesus, when he was living with Mary and Joseph, you remember at the age of 12, he went to the temple. Mm. So obviously we know that he went to the market, he went to their synagogue, he went to their sacrifices, what have you. So they could not believe in him. They said, well, who, who are you, man? We're waiting for the real Messiah. That's the same attitude they have today when they hear somebody speak of the word because of what they've been brought up in. How would we convince them that what they really are involved in is not all there is that God is attempting to offer? I, I, I think uh, it's very important that we convey our love towards them through action. Here it I is. See, I Here see. it is. Watch this. Faith cometh continues to come by hearing and hearing by the word, the of, God. word of God. Hallelujah. When John the Baptist cried out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, there was those that were instituted in religion that came to the same meeting trying to get an understanding of what was going on. John said that there's one that is coming that is greater mm -hmm. than I am. Mm -hmm. In June, we are preparing yes. Yes, yes. the yes. way of the Lord. <laughs> yes. Yes. We are the John the Baptist yes. that are telling you that you go on to see the glory of the Lord revealed. Not by religion. Religion comes to bond. Jesus says that you are like a open sepulcher to the religious institute. Ooh. He said you look 
shiny on the outside, but on the inside, you are full of dead men's bones. So you try to control people, but you cannot control God. It's a time that those that are listening under the sound of all of our voices, that you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you that there is greater than where you are. Amen. Jesus said this when he got at the end of a message, he told his disciples to get on the boat and go to the other side. I'm saying the same message to you. The road has been a little bit rocky. You might be even a little bit fearful. But get on the boat <laughs> and just take this, this trip with us and let's go to the other side. It didn't say that storms wouldn't come. It didn't say that people would say, I don't think you need to go to that event. You're going to hear stuff like that. But there's a greater call that's calling you to something greater, to not just have someone just talk to you, but for you to come in a real relationship with your God. Amen. 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 I, I, really, I really appreciate that, Pastor Mark. That's powerful. You know, and, and just to build on that a little bit, the, the in, in the ancient times, the the people followed the, the Sanhedrin, and the Pharisees, and, and, and the, uh, the, the keepers of the law. And in those times, there was the, the, the law of Moses, and then there was the oral law, which was considered even a greater law to follow. It was the oral law was high, more highly regarded by the Pharisees than the actual written law of Moses. And as we see the, uh, that Jesus has come to fulfill the law, and now the law is fulfilled, the Bible teaches that the law was as a schoolmaster to teach us mm -hmm. spiritual things. Mm -hmm. And I compare that to the religious system of today. The religious system of today, we thank God for it because it gives us a concept of God. But a religion can only take you so far. It can give you a concept of God, but it can't bring you into intimacy with God. Right. That's something you have to discover for yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be hungry. The Bible says, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. Mm -hmm. And there's a spirit of hunger and thirst that's being released in the earth. That's why they're watching this program right now. Amen. Because they're not getting what they need at church. But mm -hmm. you don't have to be afraid to to, to, to get what you need in secret. There is a multitude of people just like you that are going to gather June 7th, 8th, and 9th at Cobo Center. Amen. Amen. You, you see, the thing was um, um, uh, the, the, the division that Satan has done Amen. throughout the centuries is that blacks has their own religion. <laughs> Chaldeans have their own religion. Islam has their own religion. On and on. They don't know. Jesus says, I will build my church, yeah, yeah. not my yeah. churches. Yeah. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. My oh, church, That's right. and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Right. Okay, right. it's one church, and that church was uh, when he when uh, he asked uh, the disciples, "Who do you think I am?" And then Peter said, "You are the uh, the son, of, you know, uh, uh, the Messiah, the Son yeah. of God." Yes. And he says, "Upon this faith, you know, believing that Jesus is the Son of God, and knowing that's what the church is built on, the foundation is Jesus." And after the foundation comes believers. And there is no colors. One of these days you're going to stand in, uh, before God for judgment. He's not going to pat me on my back because I was such and such religion. Or he's not going to pat you on your back or anybody else. Mm, he says, right. what you do with the cross? Yes, absolutely. What did you do with the cross? Yes. Is your sin cleansed by the blood or isn't it? Yes. And yes. that's the bottom line. He opens that book of life. That's good. Your name is not written in there and you're in trouble. You know, Pastor, that is so profound. I, I'm just so humbled in this moment to be in this place with, 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 with these holy men of God, all of you, because this is something that has never happened before. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is Absolutely. what's going on in this room alone is historic. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 
And when the people, the Chaldeans and the Arabs and the, and, and, and the Hispanics and the blacks and the whites and, and the Koreans mm -hmm. that love the Lord Jesus Christ converge on Cobo Center in June, this is something that has never happened before, Amen. and it must be God. Amen. I, I want to piggyback on what you said. We were talking earlier, and we made this statement. I said, I am in awe. And when I said I am humbled to be here, I am extremely humbled because this is part of our prayer coming out of the call. Yes, Amen. yes it is. That God will start something that will go beyond us. And just think about this. This has never, listen, hmm. man of God, you said it. This has never happened before. I don't even think on this planet. <laughs> <It hasn't. laughs> That's what's about to happen in Kobo in June that we are coming against, man of God, what you said, the gates of hell that has tried to plant the seed of fear between us yes, yes. to divide us because the devil knows if we ever get together, mm. who glory, <laughs> the glory of the Lord is going to be revealed. Amen. And that's what we're talking about right now, men of God, you said something so powerful. Tradition is an enemy to revelation Amen. because it resists change. Tradition says, don't change, don't change. But revelation says, change, change. And that is what this whole historic event is about. Restoring our neighborhood yes. through unity Beautiful. and love. Taking our neighborhoods back through love. Tearing down the spirit of fear yes. and releasing the love yes. of God. Go ahead, yes. man of God. You mentioned Matthew 16. When Jesus said, upon this rock, mm. I will build my church. Mm. The word church in the Greek, the New Testament is written in Greek. It's a Greek word, ekklesia. It means the called out ones. So you're being called out of mm. your regular place into <laughs> the place where God's got a great gathering of his people. Mm. Now, what will be going on there? We can't even describe it right now. It's beyond <laughs> comprehension. Mm. But one thing we do know, there'll be incredible, radical, aggressive praise and worship. Mm. Now, why is that so important? We worship and praise God in four dimensions, mm. adoration, celebration, revelation, and warfare. When we get to that warfare, it tears down the strongholds uh, that separate and divide us through the power of religion. When this is done, that will be under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 You know, when you look at uh, separation that exists, I'll give you just three examples, and I'll touch on the latter one. The Catholics and the Protestants, the Jews and the Palestinians, now we'll get to the Chaldeans and the blacks. I've been in the service of the Lord for 35 years. And I'm not saying this to get your approval, but honestly, before the Holy Spirit, I tell you, I love the black people tremendously. When I witness to a black man, all I have to utter out of my mouth is the name of Jesus, and he gives me the utmost respect. Mm. I have imagined a black man robbing me and I tell him hey Jesus would not have you do that I believe he'll walk away and turn back Amen. I really believe that I mean this is how much I know the black people love Jesus rely on Jesus depend on Jesus mm. adore Jesus they worship Jesus getting back to our people they have the same mentality as well they're not ashamed of Jesus they're not ashamed of the cross they're not ashamed of the blood but we have a verse in, in Romans there where Paul says they have a zeal for him Mm. But they do it ignorantly, mm. without knowledge, without right. understanding, mm. without taking a further step on their own initiative to figure out what exactly is this man all about. Mm. They're depending on the ones they have been brought up by, such as their older brother 
or their father or their mother or their priest or their neighbor. Mm. They never really took the step towards him to figure out on their own mm. what he is attempting to impart onto them. If mm. I have a problem, I don't worry about it because I know he can handle it for me. <laughs> but if the guy that don't know Jesus has That's a right. problem, That's it right. weighs on him, man. That's yeah. right. You know, he tries to take matters into his own hand, mm -hmm. causing more grief and problem and trouble to the mm -hmm. next guy. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we introduce mm -hmm. him to the ones that don't know him mm -hmm. as they should, mm -hmm. as a friend, as a savior, mm -hmm. as a helper, mm -hmm. as a guider, mm -hmm. as a tremendous powerful being that he is mm -hmm. to deliver them out of all their troubles they get into mm -hmm. and we really are you know i mean you guys are okay yeah. believe me you guys are far ahead of what we got us. our battle is much bigger mm -hmm. than what you guys are facing mm -hmm. so if you can become successful in gathering the people to come over there we'll hail you as uh redeemers you know like a moses or <laughs> something you got our people out of the out of the captivity, yeah. man. You know? <laughs> so we'll be praying for you, and we, we will do what you guys ask of us, and whatever help we can offer, we'll be more than willing to. Amen. Well, Amen. part of that yeah. strategy is um, if, if there's leaders out there that are uh, watching this program, we're asking you uh, to uh, open your churches, open your uh, groups, your, your prayer groups, your places right. of business, mm -hmm. wherever. And uh, what we're doing is... We're getting ready to announce uh, 40 days of prayer and worship and fasting. And the way we're rolling that out is uh, 12 hours a day. There will be a schedule uh, where you can volunteer your church to open up your church for so many hours, a minimum of two to have worship and prayer. Nice. And we're going to be fasting for those 12 hours. Amen. Amen. And so now you have an opportunity to sow your prayers and your fasting and your worship into the move of God. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a dynamic when we come together with one heart and one mind and sow into the corporate move of God because we're all a body. Mm -hmm. And when we sow into the, the bot, what the body is doing, we begin to pray for our region. We begin, begin to pray for our city. We, get, we begin to pray for the world because as Detroit goes, as we've all figured That's out, true. when Detroit was about to fall, the whole world Absolutely. shook, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. And that alone proves that Detroit is strategic. And I'm a firm believer that which is true in the natural is true in the spirit. Hey, Master mm -hmm. Pastor, we only got a couple of more minutes. What is your message to the pastors or the churches out there? Um, we only got a couple of more minutes left, so we got to close up. Well, we want to uh, urge them to reach out to us. Call the 800 number. Uh, go to the website. Register for the conference. Call us. Let us know if you want to volunteer, mm -hmm. uh, if you have uh, something to bring to the table, if you want to open your church, if you want to open your business. Where can they get a hold of you? They can call us. The 800 number on the screen is 888-513-1985. My extension is number one. Or they can leave a message, and we'll definitely call. We call every single person back who reaches out to us. أعزائي المشاهدين تقريبا وقتنا انتهى وسمعتم ممكن اللي افتهمتم افتهمتوا اللي ما افتهمتم هاي هي القصة القصة إنه ال ال ربي يسوع المسيح قال سأبني كنيستي وأبواب الجحيم لن تقوى عليها الكنيسة من هم الكنيسة الكنيسة هي جماعة المؤمنين. هل في فئة معينة في هذه الحياة أبدا هل في طواف معينة أبدا هل في ديانات معينة أبدا الكل يؤمن بالرب يسوع المسيح هو الكنيسة اللي يحدث في شهر السادس هو 7-8-9 في شهر السادس في كوبا هول يا ريتكم تتصلون بالأرامية ونعطيكم معلومات أكثر بالتفاصيل حتى يتجون نريد نصلي بقلب واحد بفكر واحد وناس متحدين ونصرخ من قلوبنا للرب ونريد أن الرب يقدر الله نفسه يقدر يعمل معجزات ويروينا مجده في نفس الوقت هذه هي الاجتماع الموجود في هذا المكان نشوف لا فرق بين الـ بين الـ بين الـ الأسود والأبيض والكلداني ما فرق بين قدام الله قدام الله الكل واحد الكل واحد 
تعال لا تخلي الفرصة تفوتك وخلي تعال واختبر إيد الله بقوة الرب في حياتك وحياتك. I also would like to tell the audience to call ABN. ABN is a part of the global gathering. Uh, Basim will be one of the speakers there. We'll have awesome uh, praise and worship again in Chaldean and Arab uh, languages. So I'm excited. Amen. You know, this show has uh, just gone by way too fast. I just want to end with a real quick story. It it was 20 years ago. I was a brand new born-again Christian believer in Jesus Christ. I got saved in Chicago, came to Michigan, had no idea what to do. And there was a a young African-American window cleaner who came to my office and invited me to go to church with them. I said, I, this was in South. I said, well, where do you go to church? He said, I go to church in Lansing. And I said, great. And he showed up to my driveway every Sunday morning for six months. And at 8 <laughs> o'clock in the morning, we drove together, and I followed him out to Lansing. And I went to an all-black church in Lansing, and it was there. I got fed the word of God. I got matured in my spirit. I danced and hugged my black brothers and sisters, had the time of my life. But here's the point. What if I would have said to the guy, I'll get back to you? And what if I asked my sisters to come with me? Or my mom and dad to come with me, or my family, my friends and cousins to come with me, and whatever they, whatever they would all have said no, which they did, and I would not have gone. Listen to me for a second. One of the most famous stories in Jesus' ministry, when Jesus was walking in the water, and it was a storm, and all the disciples were in the boat, and Peter spoke the words, Jesus, tell me to come, and I will come. Yes. He didn't look to the other 11 disciples and say, hey guys, if it's okay with you, let's all do this together. As a matter of fact, the 11 disciples were in the boat, all kind of thought, it's comfortable in the boat. Why would you want to leave a perfectly good boat? It's a nice boat. There's a floor in the boat. There's no floor out there. I'll stay in the boat. Do not not come to the call or come to the the event at at, uh, Cobo Hall because your cousins or your friends or your spouse may not want to come. Come because God is stirring in your spirit right now that you're supposed to come. Yeah. I thank God I was obedient to God and not to man. I went to church for six months in Lansing, an hour and a half one way, to an all-black church where they loved me and they fed me the word of God. I thank God for that. But I want to say something to you. As soon as Peter stepped out of the boat and he began, the Bible says he walked towards Jesus. He was walking in the water. Then the Bible says he saw the wind and he saw the waves. And the only way to see wind and waves is to take your eyes off of Jesus. Mm. When you take your eyes off Jesus, then you're going to hear people saying things and talking this way yeah. and saying all the Keep yeah. your eyes on yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Come yeah. to the event June 7th, 8th, and 9th at Cobo Hall because Jesus wants you to come because the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now that you're supposed to come. And do not take your eyes off of Jesus because if you look left or look right, all you're going to see and hear are wind and waves, and that's yes. not where the glory of God is. Yes. The glory of God is going to be at Cobo Hall in June. We look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. Have a great night. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor.